Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Pints with Air. I'm Brent Hefley, the Sales and Marketing Director for Air Acoustics. And I'm here with Ariel Brown, our VP and Senior Engineer, and Ryan Berry, our CEO and Expert Technician. Cheers, guys. And cheers to everyone out there. Cheers. Hope you're staying warm and uh, doing well. It's a little bit of snow there in Boulder today, huh? You guys got dumped on last night. Yeah, kind of funny. We had snow and then it was warm and 65 degrees and no snow. And then today it's snow again. So, you know, Colorado weather. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Well, it sounds like uh, everyone in Texas is thawing out nicely now uh, after that That's big, good. big, crazy winter storm there. Yep. Uh, so glad for everyone, everyone there. Uh, we've got uh, viewer questions today, so that's going to be a lot of fun. We've got uh, a few good questions that uh, you guys have sent in out there. Um, we're going to answer them here, but before we get to that, let's talk beers, uh, because that's obviously an integral part of our video here. Um, and I heard you guys got some special beers delivered there, which I'm totally jealous of. So <laughs> Ryan, what did you, uh, what did you get? Yeah, so uh, we got for our viewer questions episode, viewer beer. And so <laughs> we had uh, one of our viewers send in some beer um, to us, uh, Uwer, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. But uh, mine is Zombie Monkey, which is nice. a very, very impressive can from Tallgrass Brewing Company. I love it. And it's, it's a very nice, very dark beer. So, you know, the kind you can't see through, Porter. which are generally my favorite, the Porter, yes. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. That looks cool. So yeah, so he so he sent us three beers. The one that I took was it's a Martin City Mexican Spice Stout, and it is rich and delicious. Cool. Cool. Chocolate, chili, espresso. It is also delicious. Wow, those look great. That's uh, that's fun. I've got one. I actually this is it's kind of funny because I picked this one out uh, the fridge today, and it's one a friend gave me. Just it was one of those things. So. Uh, it's uh, Fort George Brewing, uh, their Tender Loving Empire Northwest Pale Ale. Um, Fort George is a great brewery. I've never seen this one before, but uh, it's good. So thanks, Francis. Appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, it'd be a good day to have a, have a pint and answer some questions. Absolutely. All righty. So let's dive in here and um, see what we've got. The, uh, the first question, and a number of people have asked this. Um, so it's, you know, we include a nice stock power cable with all our products, right? And we've done it for years. We haven't done anything crazy exotic. Um, but the, the question is, should I replace that? And if so, what kind of improvements can I expect? So, which is a very valid question, you know, cables make a big difference as we all know. Um, so what do you guys say to that? Should they replace, should guys replace their stock power cable with something, an upgraded cable out there? So, you know, the, the cable that we provide is, you know, when we, when we first sourced, it was a cable made here in the U.S. And, uh, you know, that was one of Charlie's big uh, criteria for picking any of the parts that we put into our products. Yep. Fortunately, it became harder and harder and to the point of impossible to continue to find um, and the company we, we continue to work with them to this day moved most of their operations overseas but you know knowing that there wasn't much of an alternative we we stuck with the source we knew and uh, mm -hmm. so we continue to use them to this day and they've been a great company you know that's it's very reliable cables they you know do what they're supposed to do exactly um, that said you know just from the shows and everything else that we've done over the years we know everything makes a difference. And, you know, those are not the number one sounding power cables that you'll ever find. Um, the problem is, is that there's about as many different options out there as you can think of. And uh, so, you know, some people have one preference over another and we're not, uh, you know, really interested in telling who um, company or customers who to listen to or which brand is the best and so forth. So, um, to be rather agnostic, we we provide a per, you know a cable that's reliable and will do the job, but may not be the best. And you know that way you can take the money that you saved on investing into a higher end cable right out the gate into putting it into the brand of your choice. Yeah, for sure. I know you know one of the considerations is that 
somebody who buys our product may already have their own set of cables. So we don't want somebody to spend, you know, an extra $500 buying a piece of air gear for a cable that they're not going to use. So, you know, that's, that's really a big consideration uh, for why we use that particular cable. Exactly. Um, And, you know, if we were distributing the cables, you know, it'd be just another level of markup and this is not something we're interested in. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Ariel, do you have thoughts on on some of the sonic uh, improvements that somebody can expect with it, or other comments? Um, a, a little bit, you know. It's you know, from our experience, I mean, it, it certainly makes a difference. Like, and, and, you know, I'm gonna, I absolutely agree there. Um, you know, it's um, and you know what to expect. What I find is, um, especially anything power related, it really affects um, you know, kind of the the, the black background is, I think, is one of the biggest the biggest um, aspects that I notice. Real, mm-hmm. You know, you know, you know, kind of the noise level, the kind of the noise floor, and that you know, ultra black background that we call it. Um, that's the first thing I notice, as well as just kind of a um, a solidity and kind of coherency that that um, that that power section provides. Um, yeah, I would I would definitely agree with that and. I think the other thing that we've also experienced too, um, collectively and individually, is that not only doing a nicer power cable, but making sure it's lifted off the floor, uh, particularly if you've got carpeting um, or anything like that. That makes such a huge difference. And you know, you can literally, if you haven't tried that yet at home, you can literally go and I, you know, in a pinch, I've used. I don't even want to go through all the things I've used in a pinch, but, you know, I've taken business cards and done a TP fold wow. and put on that uh, toilet paper rolls, uh, make a great lift piece because they've got enough structure to hold most cables, not everyone, but, you know, as long as you're getting it, you know, three quarters to an inch off of whatever surface that is, uh, right. it's going to make a, a difference. And it's definitely worth a shot, even if it's only touching in one place, um, lift yeah. it up. Yeah. yeah, we've got we've got crazy stories there where, you know, uh, you know, when, when Charlie was here and he would, you know, um, you know, after his accident and he would roll in his wheelchair after, you know, maybe a couple of weeks away, we'd come in to listen to the system. He'd come and roll into the center of the room and we'd listen and he'd look around and say, I think there's a wood block off somewhere. We're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and we'd go crawl behind the racks up. Sure enough, there was one block that had been shifted and the, and the cable was touching the carpet in one spot. And after weeks or months away, he could hear that. Yep. It absolutely makes a difference. And I, yeah. it boggles me, but yeah. uh, he could hear it and it yep. absolutely ma- makes a difference. That, it's, it's, yeah, it was infuriating, it's... but it, <laughs> it's true. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, it's one of those things when, whenever I do a system setup at a show, like every single morning I'd be in the room early and that's one of the very first things I'd look at because invariably somebody, some of the staff from the hotel would come in and vacuum and they would not, you know, even if they were careful, I mean, even if we had things, you know, blocked off, they would nudge one and knock it off a block or something. And, and uh, yeah, we'd have to set it back up, um, run the IVE disc again, and then we're ready for the day. (laughs) Yeah. Cool. So there's uh, there's power cables. Uh, great uh, short answer there. Um, short the next answer. one, <laughs> yeah. The next one is you know it's a little bit, I guess, a little more open ended, um, and it does involve some specifics in terms of brands. But we had uh, we've had again a number of people ask you know what type of speakers we test with, and yeah, if I there's had that a question t- today, on the phone yeah, today. right. And then, you know, is it a single style, not just manufacturer, but a single type of, of speaker, um, style of speaker, or do we use multiple types of speakers? Um, yeah, so I'll jump in here real quick, just because, I mean, we would love to, you know, be able to test all of our products with a wide range of speakers. Now, so send us your speakers. Everyone just ship them over, yeah, put right. the address up. Now, now with practicality-wise, that that's extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for quite a few years now, we have, you know, uh, um, a set of speakers that we trust and we believe are extremely neutral. Um, um, And and they are our, what is more or less our, our, our kind of reference system. Right. Um, And so, you know, you know, we do like to listen with, with, with a few other, especially really popular 
uh, models or brands that we know a lot of our dealers and a lot of our customers use, we always want to listen with those as well to make sure we are, you know, meeting, uh, you know, you know, the bulk of our customers, um, you know, needs. And yeah. so um, our reference speakers are, 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 are the TAD ref ones. And we've had those, I'm, boy, I'm not, it's more than a decade now, I believe. Yeah. And they're really nice just because number one, they're consistent. So, you know, we just know what they sound like and it's something we're used to. So that's important to start off with just yep. for that, you know, how much of a difference does it make? You know, if you start changing speakers at the same time, that can get really complex of an answer. And now you're chasing, chasing the wrong, wrong thing sometimes. For sure. But then, you know, having used those as our, our mainstay and keeping the consistency in the listening room is really important. You know, we also do listen to the products during R&D in different environments, you know, yeah. when we're getting closer to the end. So you'll take one home, Ryan, you'll take it home, Ariel. We'll usually send a prototype to our distributor in Japan who has a very critical listening room and listens differently than we do. So, you know, occasionally they'll pull up stuff and, and we'll go, oh, wow, yeah, we actually can recreate that here. And, and uh, so we try to get that diversity more towards the end of the development after we've done the big portion of it. Yeah, and that's something we've really gotten, you know, we, we've always done to a degree, but we've gotten more, more and more into and better about over time, just because, you know, one of, one of the funny things there was, you know, we used to have, you know, the set set of songs, we knew the song was really tricky for some, you know, it was, it tested a lot of different ranges in the, in the, uh, in the products that we're testing all in one song. So, you know, it would be one of our staple songs. And another one was one that Charlie happened to see, you know, Sean Colvin in concert. So we always listen to this Sean Colvin track. And right. we got into that habit of always listening to the same like five songs. It was kind of funny. It was like, you know, just this rotation of five songs. And uh, I think it was around the uh, AX5 we were developing. And on a whim, I just pulled out some Frank Sinatra or something and started playing Frank, Frank Sinatra over the AX5. And it revealed some things that was like, oh, well, that's not quite right. And so we're like, we need to be better about, you know, really, really being variant in how we're testing these things. Because, yeah, you can tune it really easily to one thing, but then miss out on how to have that, you know, open endedness with, you know, what happens when you plug it into these Vandersteen speakers or right. what happens when you're playing this type of music versus that type of music and so forth. So that's really gave us a good lesson in, in making sure we had that more diverse testing. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, I know we've had had uh, vivid speakers there recently. We've had Vandersteens. We have yep. the TADs kind of always in place. Um, you know, over the years we've tested with Wilson speakers. Um, yep. with Avalon speakers, quite a bit. Avalon Charlie. quite a bit. Yeah. So, so it is a diversity, but you know, I think I think the point is that we have the ones that we really trust do like a lot of core development on because a lot of that time we're really listening to differences between circuit design or parts or pieces yep. so we're really looking at small absolute differences and yep. and then when we get to the end listening to the wider range of uh, of what it sounds like in the world in different environments and different speakers so yeah well put yeah great um so that's a that's a good question the the third question we have today comes from um a uh, one of the listeners in zurich switzerland maximilian Mueller. And uh, I'd like to thank him for this question. It's about upsampling. And we've touched on upsampling. We've talked a lot about it on some of the digital videos, but I thought um, it'd be good to go back over it here. And you know, his question is, in general, what's your opinion of air regarding upsampling? And he says, you know, specifically, according to what he knows, um, computer-based upsampling uh, doesn't add any additional information. Um, but it helps the filters of the DAC um, and probably helps mediocre DACs in many cases. But he wants to know how that relates to the, you know, the QX20 specifically. Um, so, Ariel, you want to start off on this one? And Yeah, so I mean, about ultimately, um, you know, whether it's done in, on, in the computer or, or, in, or in, the, in the DAC circuitry itself, it's ultimately doing the same thing. Um, and, and um, you know, whether you're up something two or four, or eight or 16 X, um, whatever it is, um, you know, um, the, the, the DAC itself, it, it's the final conversion is usually at, at some fixed rates, either 16 X or 32 X or something. And so 
if you upsample to 8x on the computer, uh, and if and the DAC accepts that, it still might up, upsample two or four times above that, which is, you know, for example, um, uh, which is what, you know, the Air QX5 would do. Uh -huh. um, and so, but that brings up a good point in that, um, in that um, it's, 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 it's our philosophy that it's better to do any upsampling in, in one pass. And so, and so we feel it's better uh, to send the file to the QX5 in its raw original format. And then we'll do a one pass conversion, uh, upsampling uh, uh, to the final rate before it's converted to analog. Mm -hmm. uh, the other factor there is that, is that um, in that upsampling, it is that that upsampling filter. And so the, you know, the impulse response of that filter is critical to what um, it's gonna, um, uh, the final conversion is gonna sound like. And so, mm -hmm. You know, it's the one, the one upside to doing it in, on the computer side is that you have a lot of processing power available to you. And so, you know, right. you know, depending on what the software you're using, um, you know, you have, you might be able to fine tune and, and, and change the response and all that stuff. Um, but at the same time, um, in our experience, that doesn't necessarily, um, you know, doing a lot of processing in the computer side, it kind of adds noise. And, um, you know, you might be able to do some really radical EQ kind of stuff, but as far as just upsampling, we haven't seen any benefit to doing doing on the, on, on the computer side. And so mm -hmm. it, it's our strong philosophy that it's best to send the file to the QX5 in its original format. Uh, we, we then upsample it in one pass with our known good uh, uh, coefficients. Um, and that's, that's really the bulk of it. Um, now, you know, he mentions that, um, asking about, it doesn't add any, any information. So, you know, if you, you know, if you're upsampling from, let's say 48 kilohertz to 96 kilohertz, and so you're, and so you're just doubling, you're going to 2X upsampling. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you know, you, you can't, you can't bring back, um, um, original information. You, all that is doing is basically interpolating data. And again, whether it's on the computer or done on the DAC, yeah, all that is doing is easing the requirements for the analog filter after after the DDA conversion. That's all any of these filters are doing, regardless of where it's where it, where it is implemented. And so, um, finding upsampling is not going to retrieve any information that was not recorded in, in the original recording, or that was thrown away when it was decimated to a lower sample rate. Once right. you have um, the lowest the, the lowest sample rate as transmitted in, any any other information is lost. And One so, of the big reasons that you are, you know with computer audio, everybody strives to have that lossless you know compression because once you do lose the data, yep, like you said you you can't bring it back. There's nothing that's going to do that. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. <clears throat> absolutely. Great. Um, cool. Well, those were really good questions. Um, Please send us more. Uh, let us know what you want to what you want to know about. We'll do another one of these uh, answering sessions maybe next month uh, whenever we get a, enough good questions in. So email us at pinesatair.com. And uh, until next time, happy listening, everyone. Cheers. Cheers.